for attending, please um, indicate in the chat box your um, name, the class you want to get credit for, your instructor, um, and we will make sure that we let them know that, that you were here and participating. Um, the other thing is that we will be sharing the slides. So as Diana said, the, the recording will go up on the WMU Library's YouTube channel. We'll also share a link to the slides. We've got an awful lot of links um, through and, you know, a lot of uh, an awful lot of information. So you will get, a, a, you know, the a copy of the slides after the fact. So you'll have all the links that you can go back to as well as um, you know, any other information and, and, you know, you can, you're welcome to share it with others as well. So, um, uh, for those of you that, that, uh, I have not met, my name is Michelle bear and I am the education librarian. Um, aren't we all education librarians, but I am the college of education librarian. Um, and my colleague, Diana Sachs is here and she is the health and human services librarian. Um, and so we both, uh, kind of come at the public policy issue from our respective subject areas, because there's a lot of public policy issues that um, affect education as well as health and human services. So that's kind of how we come at this topic, but we try, well, we're um, planning to, you know, give a, a broad overview so that hopefully, um, everybody, um, will, will have some information about how to get started in their area. So, Diana is controlling the slides. There we go. So, as far as the agenda, um, we'll, we'll give a little bit of, um, kind of overview, as I said, and kind of set the stage for what pol public policy is and why you care. I don't want to go into too much information about that, but it is important. Um, as regards to how the information is structured and how you look for information. So we'll talk about how public policy is created and who's involved in that. Um, but we're really going to kind of emphasize those last two bullet points, how you can find public policy, um, how you can find information about public policy. I should also have mentioned, um, if you have questions along the way, please ask. Um, we're okay being interrupted. Um, and also, the one of the advantages of having two presenters is that one of us can um, keep an eye on chat while the other person is talking. So um, if you have a question, you can, you know, interrupt us or um, just go ahead and put it in the chat and we'll try to make sure that we address it. So if there's something that isn't making sense, you know, don't wait till the end. We will allow time for questions at the end and um, and uh, comments at the end. But, you know, if you have a question that is something that isn't making sense, please don't don't hold your question. You can go ahead and ask it. Um, okay, so, you know, diving right in. So the first um, uh, thing to talk about is what is public policy. I, so I'm sure you have an idea of what public policy is. The um, definition that I chose, there's lots of definitions out there, is this one that comes from an electronic um, dictionary of public policy and administration that we have. This is a little bit old, but it's you know kind of the same concepts. Um, and so what I have highlighted there is, you know, to me, what's important about this is whatever the um, whatever the the government entity or the public administration um, does or doesn't do is public policy. So not doing something is public policy. Mo you know, so for instance, not extending employment be benefits is public policy. Not banning assault weapons, things like that. So, um, so uh, public policy is what is enacted, and we've got lots of documentation of that. But it's also what's not. So, um, next uh, slide, please. So, how does public policy affect us and our professional life? So, you know, public policy affects you in your personal life um, because it affects everything, including environment, healthcare, education, you know, building codes, you know, all aspects of that. Um, and all of that is documented. Um, but, but probably, um, you know, why you're here and probably why you need to know more about uh, public policy and how to find public policy is because it affects your professional career. Um, so it can be, um, so, so public policy affects, you know, all, all of our professional areas, um, including education and environment and workplace safety and all that sort of stuff. Um, and so public policy comes from, in general, it comes from legislation, um, and and it's open to interpretation. So there's lots of different ways to interpret it, including by the courts, because often people sue to say that this public policy is um, unconstitutional or, or violating my rights or something like that. Um, but we also have uh, professional, you know, legal and ethical obligations to at least understand enough about public policy so that we abide by it and so that we may implement policy um, in our own, you know, kind of spheres of control. Um, that um, that are in line with that policy, and also that we can advocate for our, you know, whatever um, area that we represent, so we can advocate for that in in changed public policy. So 
you know, go on to the next screen. Thank you. Okay, so starting a little bit um, more information about kind of the process. I like this infographic um, for several reasons, um, partly because it shows how the public policy is a cycle. And in some ways, it's also, you know, kind of uh, appropriate because it's, you know, also indicates that there's a certain amount of spinning of wheels. <laughs> there's a certain amount of, of uh, you know, kind of uh, Groundhog Day, you know, over and over again. Certain things keep coming up over and over again and um, things keep changing. But the, it sort of um, so, you know, part of the reason that I want to, um, you know, kind of give these concepts is because there's information that's generated at each point along the way. And depending on what um, what your area of interest is, you know, whether knowing what the policy is or how did it come about or what does it mean? Um, so it sort of um, this uh, cycle kind of starts with the problem identification. Usually there's, you know, advocacy groups or um, politicians, um, you know, have, um, issues that they identify as being a problem that's something that needs to be addressed the agenda setting i i think often of the agenda setting as happening kind of around the um election cycle because you know those things that kind of float to the top as far as something that that um legislation actually is is um, developed around um, happens during this agenda period. Um, then the policy making is where the laws are actually enacted. Um, you know, the, there's lots of compromise, lots of collaboration that comes up with that. Money is allocated or, you know, certain amount of money is allocated. Then it's implemented and then what happens? And then either it, it does what it's supposed to do, it has unintended consequences, it doesn't do as much as it's supposed to do, it's sort of evaluated and then it kind of starts all over again because these advocacy groups and politicians and so on, um, uh, you know, kind of start the process over again if there are an amendments needed or um, changes needed. Um, so if you go on to the next slide. Um, so again, this, you know, the, the um, concept here is that this is all a, a circular, you know, ongoing process. But this slide um, shows, you know, kind of where the information is generated. So two things. First of all, um, who's involved um, in the the policy process? And remember that all of these all of these groups and all of these um, institutions that are involved are generating information. So they're generating information, reports, or statistics, or whatever. Um, all of which, you know, is is potentially something that you might want to find to understand um, the public policy. So you have media and public opinion, and and I think part of the reason that public policy changes so much is because public opinion changes so much. Um, and um, so, so, you know, so you can check news, you can check uh, opinion polls, public debate, that sort of thing. Um, and then laws we've got, we're going to, we're going to spend a good bit of time on, you know, helping you find um, those sorts of things and how they, how that all you know, is produced. Um, the you know, government agencies uh, produce reports as well as interpretation and regulations of how that policy is, um, is supposed to be implemented. Um, people study it, you know, did it work? What um, uh, did it, uh, they evaluate and analyze and so on. Um, and then there are, you know, policy and advocacy groups that that advocate for one option or the other. So um, so anyway, as I said, the the um, the kind of the point I want to make about this slide is that there are all of these people in the in the colored boxes are groups that are generating information. And so the other um, thing that is um, important about this slide is is when you're when you're researching policy information, it's good to kind of know what part of the process it is you're interested in. Maybe you're interested in the whole process. How did this go from beginning to end? Um, or maybe you're just interested in the law itself, or you're interested in in the evaluation of it. So it kind of helps to know who's generating that information um, along the way, and what what kind of what bucket it's it's in in terms of um, of categories of, of information. Okay, next slide. I'm uh, looking at the chat to see if anybody has any questions. Um, so how is public policy created? So I said, you know, there are all these um, different uh, areas of, um, you know, uh, different groups and, and institutions that are involved. When the public policy itself is created, it's pretty much a legislative process. But remember that that legislative process can be at any level. So we're we're mostly focusing on federal legislation, um, but there's state legislation um, that it, that also you know generates its own documentation. Um, so you know that whole legislative process, which maybe you learned about in civics in high school, 
Um, and um, there's also executive order. That's actually been, and I think we've had more activity in executive order in the last couple of years than I can remember um, because we have the, the governor in, in this case, uh, uh, executing or, you know, putting out executive orders as well as the president putting out a lot of executive orders. So that's, that's another way that that um, policy can be issued is through the pen of the executive. And we should also mention that um, that when we talk about policy, it's a little bit, um, it can be a little bit confusing because there's also the issue of policy that's more at the institutional level. So, for instance, um, you know, there's company policy. WMU has a whole list of policies um, with regard to cheating or um, uh, intellectual property or, you know, uh, intellectual or uh, um, academic integrity, all those sorts of things. So, so there's institutional policy, um, which is kind of outside of the whole public policy, except that, um, of course, it does have to abide by whatever the, you know, the overarching um, uh, uh, constituency is. Okay. Next slide. Okay, so uh, focusing on, so moving into kind of the federal um, laws and publications, and we're going to get into uh, some detail of this. Um, and so just, just this is a very brief, I mean, we could, you know, you can take whole classes and spend years um, figuring out government information, but this is extremely surface level. But so when a, it, through the legislative process, when a bill is created and, you know, maybe you remember the schoolhouse rock, the, um, it's actually still really accurate. I think the whole thing about um, how a bill becomes a law. Um, and so, first of all, there's a there's a bill number, and it's always going to start with either HR for if it came out of the the um, House of Representatives or an S if it came out of the Senate. Um, it's always a good idea to try to figure out the number on each of these things, whether it's a law or a bill, um, as well as the official name. Um, there's often there's the you know like Obamacare or um, you know there's there's all sorts of uh, kind of common names that people use for for these pieces of policy, which isn't necessarily the actual name. And so sometimes if you have trouble finding information, it can be because it would be you really need to know the actual name of the act. So there's a bill, and then there's lots of places you can look up bill numbers. Congress.gov is one of them. Um, we're going to talk about a, a couple of others. So if it's actually enacted, if it's if it's um, uh, you know voted into law, then it gets a public law number. Um, so a PL number, if you've ever seen that. And the first that in this case, the example that I put there, the uh, 116 is the Congress. So it's the hundred. It came out of the 116th Congress in this case. So there's two parts to that public law number. The first being the number of the of the Congress that enacted it. Those. So if it's if it's actually current law, it shows up in a publication called Statutes at Large. By the way, all of this is the kind of freely available government information. We're going to talk a little bit about um, the, you know, kind of what's publicly available as as opposed to things that are licensed. Um, and so if it if it is enacted, it goes into the US code. It's given a USC number. Um, and um, and then when it goes to whatever the appropriate um, agency is, whether it's the um, you know her housing and urban development, health and human services, the Department of Education, um, then they figure out you know all the different individual regulations and implementation, and that goes into the Federal Register. So you know kind of those um, the statutes at large, U.S. Code, Federal Register are all really important. Um, uh, pieces of a documentation that um, that are put out by the federal government, and those all are things that are freely available. So it's all out there. Um, it's just not as easy to find sometimes as you would like it to be. Okay. And so and now it's uh, I'm going to turn it over to Diana. So, but I'll take a little bit of a pause there and have a look. Were there any questions or comments? Okay, I'm not seeing anything, so we'll move on. Okay, well, thank you, Michelle. Um, now that Michelle's given us a good overview of, uh, excuse me, there we go. <laughs> uh, she's given us a good overview of how public policy information is produced. Uh, so I'm going to show you how we can actually find some of that public policy information. And after each step or every couple of steps, uh, we're going to do a short activity so that you will actually be able to practice the uh, finding public policy information on an area of interest for you. So I uh, hope you're all prepared for that. <laughs> um, 
So starting with how we can find the actual legislation on topics that impact and interest us. Since legislation and the information about the entire legislative process is publicly available, like Michelle said, we can actually find a lot of this through regular web searching rather than having to rely on some of the subscription databases that we've become accustomed to using in academic research. The challenge, though, is knowing what types of information exist, and I think Michelle's given you a decent overview of that, and then the techniques that we can use to find that information and separate out the government information from everything else that exists on the internet. <laughs> Now, one really simple technique is just to stick the word law or legislation or statute into your web search. Uh, if you're focused on a particular jurisdiction, like a particular state or city or a county, just add that location to your search too. And when examining the ways that laws are, uh, or when examining laws and the, the different policies that are set up in response to those laws, it's often helpful to review the debates that took place during the process of enacting that law, the different political compromises, the different positions that legislators were taking during the process of writing and passing that legislation. And we also then want to be able to see, not again, not just the law itself, but how that legislation is received, how it is implemented, how it is amended, either during the process or after the process. Uh, Michelle pointed out that this information is frequently cyclical and that uh, the same issues continue to come up over and over and over again as circumstances change because no law is perfect. No law is going to work perfectly for any for everybody. And so we will frequently see major acts of legislation be amended over time, either as new circumstances arise as uh, or as new political ideologies become ascendant. Um, and then finally, it's also very useful to uh, see for each piece of legislation how it is reviewed and interpreted by courts and other legal experts. Now, again, a lot of this information is publicly available. But one thing that I would point out is that legal interpretation in particular, especially things like law review journals, uh, are frequently published in proprietary databases that do require a subscription to access them. Now at WMU, we have subscriptions to these databases on the bottom of your screen here, Westlaw, Hein Online, and Nexus Uni. All of these uh, provide excellent insight into the legislative history and legal analysis around different pieces of legislation. They also have the legislation itself, um, which in some cases you may consider the presentation format of information within these databases to be more user friendly than some of the publicly accessible information, even though anything that is produced by a government agency, published by a government agency, will be publicly accessible. Uh, now, I would love to spend some time digging deeper into legislative history and legal interpretation, but that would be a whole other workshop. So for now, I'm just going to let you know that these resources exist. And I would encourage you to explore them more deeply as you um, as you have topics that you would like to explore. So just to show you a couple of examples, um, I've got a few tabs open here of different searches that I did. Um, Michelle and I have both mentioned that, again, a lot of this information is publicly available. Oh, excuse me. I think you're muted. Uh, Diana, we can't hear you. Can't hear you. <laughs> okay. Can't hear you. Sorry. There we go. So uh, I do have a few um, 
searches that I've already done to get us started. Um, just to show you some examples of what I'm talking about. Uh, so if you just, again, just add the word law or legislation or statute to your search, a lot of times you will get in your immediate web searches some pretty basic information about what kind of legislation actually exists on a topic. So I'm, for the purposes of this example, I'm going to use the uh, Flint water crisis as my foundational topic. And so if I'm interested in laws that exist surrounding safe drinking water, I just do a Google search for drinking water law. And one of the first things that I see is the Safe Drinking Water Act passed by Congress in 1974. Uh, with uh, various uh, websites uh, providing information about that, including, by the way, Wikipedia. And all the usual caveats about using Wikipedia still apply and that because anyone can edit a Wikipedia article, it is important to be very thoughtful and skeptical about the information that you find. But for basic factual information like the name of a statute, or like Michelle was saying, the public law number or the US code section, that is usually reliable and you can then follow the, those citations to get to the original public law. Or the, in this case, it's there's both the public law version and the uh, US code section, which have been created in response to the public law. So, in this case, I, yeah, I just did a quick search for drinking water law, and now I've learned about the Safe Drinking Water Act of 1974. If I do a search for drinking water Michigan legislation, now I'm seeing results for the Michigan Safe Drinking Water Act, which was subsequent to the federal Safe Drinking Water Act. So these are two different complementary pieces of legislation that I've now identified. So what I'd like you all to do is based on what I've just that, that kind of really basic search that I've done, I'd like you to practice. And I'm going to put into chat a link to a Google spreadsheet. And I'd like everybody to follow that link and go to the shared Google spreadsheet. And for now, I just want you to do columns A and B and C. And just put your name and a topic that you're interested in. First name is fine. You don't need to add more than your first name unless you feel like it. Um, your name, a topic that you're interested in, and do a, just a quick web search and see if you can identify one piece of legislation that would connect, have an impact on the public policy that you are interested in. So we'll just take about maybe three minutes to do that. It's always fun to see the variety of what people are searching. That's my favorite part. <laughs> <laughs> one, I always say that one of my favorite parts about being a librarian is that rather than just doing my own research, I get to learn about everybody else's research at the same time. <laughs> Definitely true. Uh, Ellen, I see your note. You should not need to sign in. Um, it's possible that your browser settings might be asking you to sign in through Google, but everybody should, anybody on the internet should have full access to this spreadsheet. Uh, let me try to send you a direct link and see if it makes any difference.
See if that works better for you, Ellen. And let's just take another minute or so on this. If um, we're having, if you're having difficulty uh, finding something for right now, don't worry about it. We're going to come back to the same exercise a few more times. I just want to make sure that you all have the opportunity to practice. And I also don't want to take up too much of your time. We do still have a fair bit left to talk about. Uh, so, Ellen, if I will put, I, I can uh, copy your topic in if you're able to find um, reference to a particular uh, law or statute that you'd like to add to the work to the worksheet. Just uh, feel free to put it in chat, and I'll copy and paste it for you. Yeah, those are all really good topics. Yes. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go back to our slides, but if you would like to continue to um, add content to your column C, please feel free. Uh, again, we're going to be coming back to doing columns D and E in a few minutes. So that's a real basic overview of some of the information about legislation that we often need to find. And again, there's so much more interpretation and analysis that we can get into with some of the specialized resources, looking at legal interpretation, looking at um, uh, different policy, uh, different positions that um, different stakeholders have taken at different points of the process. But the next big thing that we want to talk about is the executive branch, which consists of these different federal, state, and local agencies, which are actually responsible for enacting or executing the uh, legislation. So these can be in the form of actually designated policies uh, or guidelines or directives, or in some cases, emergency orders, like we've been dealing with a fair bit recently under, uh, our, under COVID. Uh, and we can search a variety of different, um, uh, we, can get, we can collect a lot of this information for, through web searches. Uh, again, because it's publicly accessible information because it's produced by government agencies. Now, it's useful when you are doing a web search for information through a particular executive branch agency, it's often useful to limit your web results to that government agency website. Uh, rather than just picking up all of the results from all sorts of other websites that might be talking about your topic, but are not necessarily uh, pro providing the information direct from the government agencies. Now, some of you may already be very familiar with Google's advanced search options, but I wanted to show you a couple of examples of how we can use that in this, uh, in this situation. So here's a search. I just do a general Google search for Michigan drinking water. Because again, we're thinking that if my topic has to do in response to the Flint water crisis, and I'm thinking about drinking water safety, specifically in the state of Michigan. So I do my search, my general Google search for Michigan drinking water. Now, the first thing that comes up is a Wikipedia article on the Flint water crisis. Next things that come up, we have the next one is an article from the Nat Natural Resource Defense Council, which is a nonprofit organization. Next, we get the government website from the state uh, of the, this is the Environment, Great Lakes, and Energy Department. I always have to remember what that acronym stands for because this is what used to be the Michigan Department of Environmental Quality, but was renamed the Environment, Great Lakes, and Energy Department. Next up, we have another Michi state of Michigan agency, uh, which is the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services, talking about drinking water. Now we've got a whole bunch of news sources from Michigan Radio, from CNN, from Politico, from NPR. Uh, so a lot of different resources. Only a couple of them were re related to the um, 
uh, government agencies. So next up, here's what happens if I do a Google advanced search. And if any of you are not familiar with Google advanced search, you can get it just by Googling advanced search and it will take you right to Google's advanced search, which is just google.com slash advanced underscore search. Um, what this allows you to do is apply a lot of sophisticated limits to your search. And in particular, I want to draw your attention to the option of how we can narrow our results to a particular domain or site. So I'm doing the same search uh, where we are finding pages with the words Michigan drinking water, but we are limiting our results to the domain of Michigan.gov. And when we do that advanced search, we are getting only results that are from Michigan.gov websites. So the agencies that are part of the Michigan government. If we do a similar kind of search, this one was limiting not just to Michigan.gov, but specifically to Michigan.gov slash MDHHS, which is the website for the Michigan State's uh, Department of Health and Human Services. So it's the same search, but limiting even more to just the web pages from the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services. So this is a great way to pre-limit your results to just the information that is being produced and shared by a particular government agency. Now, I'm also going to post in chat for you a link to this page. This is, uh, again, a Wikipedia page, which lists all of the different states and territories and the domain areas for all of them. So wherever you end up going, if you are doing your research, you can always gather the domain for that particular um, uh, state or territory if you would like to limit your results to that area. If you're looking more generally for any government website, whether it be federal or a particular state, just do a straight up .gov instead of Michigan.gov. Um, Here's a couple of examples of what that would look like. Uh, Michigan actually has an entire section of their website of Michigan.gov related to campus sexual assault. So if we were to search as the domain Michigan.gov slash campus sexual assault, we could search all of the websites that are contained within that uh that domain and therefore we can search for specific topics surrounding that like say statistics or resources for help or so on uh you could i've just provided a few other examples for other states so in wyoming the relevant department would be the their Depar department of environmental quality would be the relevant agency for wastewater management so you could limit your search results to that department and so on so again activity time <laughs> So now I'd like you all to go back to our activity and just do column D and see if you can find again a, an example of uh, a government agency from the executive branch. And again, this could be federal, state, or local, totally up to you, that would be res that is responsible for creating and overseeing policy that relates to your issue that you've already recorded. So again, just about three minutes or so to do that. And Ellen, I see that you've uh, posted uh, something in chat. Did you want to, uh, was that something that you wanted to have appear in your, um, in the document? Yes, I do. Thank you. All right. There you go.
And here is, so you all have it. Here is the link to the list of domains for different uh, states and territories. Yeah, I see somebody put something about uh, an extension act that that's very common. Like we were talking about how these things are cyclical and how they keep getting amended and extended. And, you know, so that's uh, that's a good example. Especially these emergency executive orders that we're seeing so much of right now under COVID as the situation changes. Um, in terms of infection rates or vaccination rates that we're getting new orders all the time. <laughs> Let's take about one more minute. Okay, and again, you can continue to um, fill out that worksheet uh, throughout the rest of, of this presentation. So don't worry that uh, if you're not quite done yet. So now we've covered uh, finding legislative information and finding policy information about how the, the uh, legislation is actually put into practice. The next thing is to look at what happened, uh, what the results were. And this is where academic interpretation can come into play. So academic interpretation is really important for us to understand not just the policy itself, but its impact in the real world. Um, what actually are the results of a particular piece of legislation or a particular set of policies that are put up by an agency? Um, in the in academic publishing, the format of the information can tell us a lot about what type and what level of coverage we'll see. Now, books, for example, tend to focus on large scale topics. They'll provide an overview of the topic of the whole issue and usually detailed interpretation of a lot of different factors all contained within a book simply because books are longer. <laughs> you know, we're talking 200, 300, 400 pages sometimes. So there's a lot more space to go deep into an issue. Um, um, this can also be true of certain types of government it produced information, especially uh, what we might think of, well, what are usually referred to as government reports, but can be book length. So if there was like an environmental impact statement that made its way into a, a report that came out of the Environmental Protection Agency, that's the sort of thing that could be as expansive as an academic book. Um, the there's the next thing is journal articles, and I think most of us are familiar with them, uh, but simply by virtue of being shorter <laughs> and because they take less time to write and publish than books, these often provide a close focus on a very narrow aspect of the topic. Uh, and law reviews are another type of uh, journal article that can be particularly useful for public policy research because they focus on providing detailed legal analysis and interpretation of very narrow focused issues. 
Uh, and if you're looking for current events, though, current events surrounding a particular issue, you're probably not going to be able to find a lot of that in those traditional academic sources simply because it takes time to research and write and publish any of these other academic sources. And if you want to know what just happened yesterday, you need the regular news. Um, so if you really need up to date information, you're going to be relying on news articles. And again, the important caveat is the even that, that the news articles are reporting on what they see at that moment. And even the best uh, journalism produced with the with really good faith can still result in information which is later proven to be incorrect or incomplete. Uh, and so this is why we often take a little bit of time before we make the uh, Im important big decisions, but it's still important to keep up with the most with the, what is actually going on right now. Now, unlike information that's published by government agencies, again, which is generally publicly available, a lot of that academic material requires either a purchase or a subscription in order to access it. And this is where your friendly library comes into play. Um, at WMU, you can search our main library search uh, at interface, and that will allow you to find policy analysis or an interpretation on your topic. It's as simple as the same kinds of searches that we were just doing. You can search for your topic and the word policy or the word law, or you could try searching for the common title of a particular law. Michelle mentioned the difference between the common title and the official title, which you know, could in, I'm not exaggerating, can be 60, 80, 100 words in the title of a piece of legislation, which is often just condensed into a common title. Uh, so that's another thing that you can search for. And again, you can limit your results by date if you're interested in a topic uh, that was addressed, uh, the policy around a, a topic at a particular time, or a by material type if you want to focus on books, for example. And so here are a couple of examples of searches that I can do in library search. So I do a search for Flint water crisis and the word policy, and I'm limiting the results to books and media. So when I do that search for Flint water crisis policy as books, we get a book, Flint Fights Back, Environmental Justice and Democracy in the Flint Water Crisis. We have another book, Power, Participation and Protest in Flint, Michigan, Unpacking the Policy Paradox of Municipal Takeovers, and so on. And each of these are, are addressing different aspects of public policy through the lens of the Flint water crisis. But this is the kinds of results that we can get. If we do a similar kind of search for the common name of a law, in this case, the Safe Drinking Water Act, the one that we've been referring to in the past from uh, originally in 1974, so if I do that search in library search, um, we have uh, primarily journal articles because I didn't limit to anything in particular. So that means primarily we're getting journal articles. So we have uh, very focused topics like improving state and local capacity to assess and manage risks associated with private wells and other drinking water systems not covered by the Safe Drinking Water Act. That's very specific. Or here, number four, we have the color of drinking water, class, race, ethnicity, and safe drinking water act compliance. So again, just some examples of how by putting in the common name of a piece of legislation, we can get a lot of that academic interpretation of, um, of the public policy. So last part of our activity, going to ask you all to go and use library search. So that's from the university library's main page and see if you can find one book or article that would provide some academic interpretation related to your topic. And if you need it, I will give you the direct link again in chat right there. Hopefully most of you have been to wmh.edu slash library before, uh, but there's a direct link. So go ahead and see if you can find one uh, book or article providing academic interpretation related to your topic.
if it's something that's been around for a long time, um, it will definitely have a lot of books like Americans with Disabilities Act has been around long enough, clean water, you know, those things that have been around long enough that people have had time to write books about them. You know, if it's something about COVID, you're not gonna find a book about it, um, you know, but but as Diana said, you'll find news articles and that sort of thing. So, so the, you know, timeliness kind of depends on the, the format of information that you'll find. Yes, most academic books uh, will take probably a minimum of a year and a half to be published. So that's one of the reasons why academic books tend to focus on larger problems, larger issues that have a, a larger time scope, whereas the journal articles and especially news articles will focus on the more immediate. Oh, and don't worry about putting your uh, information in any particular APA or MLA format. We don't care. <laughs> Just the title is sufficient if that's what you can get. Just take about one more minute. All right, let's, uh, one last thing I want to mention about um, that relates to academic interpretation, although it's similar, but not exactly the same. Uh, and that is partisan interpretation. We often focus on academic interpretation and analysis of public policy in the expectation that it will be more objective. Although that's not actually always the case, but another great resource is this information that is produced by explicitly partisan sources, whether they be think tanks or newspaper op-eds, nonprofit organizations and NGOs. Uh, these organizations frequently have a specific political or social agenda, which drives their policy research and their analysis. But that doesn't mean that they're, the information that they produce is somehow fundamentally flawed. In fact, it can be incredibly useful, but it's important for us to bring our critical analysis and evaluation to that information so that we can view it through the lens in which it was produced. So I'm gonna turn things over back to Michelle, who will share a last couple of resources for you to bookmark for future use, because we're not gonna have time to really dig deep into them, but we want you to have access to them in the future. So Michelle. Okay, so um, so as Diana said, we're not gonna have time to, to go into too much detail, but these are some really good resources um, for you to, um, you know, to do do the research on your own. The first one that you see listed there is govinfo.gov, and we've got kind of the three main areas of uh, information that you'll find there, whether you're looking at the you know, federal regulations would be, um, as we said, for the implementation and the compliance and that sort of thing, public, public and private laws for the, the text of the law and what does this law actually say, and then court opinions for um, anything, you know, where something's been challenged in the court or whether the, where the court has issued an interpretation 
interpretation. Diane, if you go ahead and click on the govinfo.gov, because I just want to show you, it's really, there's, there's so many information sites out there. And as Diana, um, uh, demonstrated, you can pretty much just do a Google search for a lot of this stuff. Um, but if you know, if you have a little bit better idea of what you're looking for in terms of where something was published, whether it's a law, um, or a bill or whatever, you can, um, you know, you see kind of the titles there of the different, so there's bills. And if those of you that are researching something that's very current, like something having to do with COVID or, you know, that kind of thing, um, you may be interested in, in looking at bills. So this, this, as I said, I think is, is one of the more comprehensive and honestly, one of the more easy sites to search because you can just put a search in there. Or like I said, if you know, kind of the the publication of what it's coming from you can you can um, search there as well so that's a really good site to know about so if you can go back to the slide um, so cq researcher is something that we have access to um, that uh, so it's a it's something we pay for um, and it comes from the congressional quarterly um, office and it is um, really good for um, kind of broad overviews it's something we really recommend to undergrads for instance who are just kind of getting into an issue so especially if you have something like uh, americans with disabilities or abortion or you know something that's been around for a long time the advantage of the cq researcher is it puts a lot of information in one place including laws including in interested parties and groups that are out there working on that issue um, and it does go back to 1923. So if you have something that's been around for a long time, uh, you know, issue that's been around for a long time, or you're interested in kind of the historical, like, you know, what were, what was kind of the public opinion or what was kind of going on with this issue in the 60s, you can do that. So the three, we've mentioned the three um, uh, resources that have to do with um, interpreting the law, Hyde Online, um, Westlaw, and Nexus Uni, which used to be LexisNexis, if you're familiar with that, are all really good um, sites for, you know, kind of secondary resources, things that analyze. So, so court cases and, and areas where um, laws have been challenged or public policy has been challenged, as well as um, uh, uh, law review articles and things like that, other kinds of secondary interpretation. So we mentioned the um, the the domain search, the .gov search um, as a Google search. And uh, on the if you go ahead and go into the next um, slide, I know I'm just about out of time. Um, so the GovTrack site, there, these are all linked, by the way. So when we send you the sl the slides, you can get back to these. Um, the GovTrack it would be a really good site again for those of you who are interested in something that's really that's really timely anything having to do with COVID or loan forgiveness or anything like that um you can actually if you set up an account you can even get notifications when something new you know something just got introduced or or there's a debate about something um and the think tanks so we've talked a couple times about think tanks and kind of their role in the policy um that think tank report search is kind of nice because it's actually a, a google search that restricts um to think tanks so for instance if you want to know something about charter schools um, and, you know, there's lots of different reports or position papers, you know, as Diana said, a lot of the, the parties are have a partisan um, perspective. But if you want to know kind of uh, the, the different sides of that, that think tank report search is a really good place to go. And there's a, that the last link there is a list of all the special interest groups um, and by name as well as issues. So if you want to know, you know, who are the who are the groups that are involved in um, in setting public policy for education or for health care, whatever, you can get a list of those and and um, contact information. OK, so with three minutes in three minutes, sorry, I didn't allow as much time for questions, but we can hang around. But and so the last slide there is um, our contact information. Um, if you are in a field that's not education or human services, then we then you um, can you can always contact one of us. Um, but if you want to uh, contact your liaison for your department, um, I, we've given you the list of uh, the the subject librarian, so you can find the person who's who is the expert in your area. And last but not ne not least, we have the evaluation, and this is the first time we've done this one. So we would re be particularly interested in your feedback. Um, if we do this again, um, what should we do differently? We would really appreciate hearing uh, whether this was worth your time or how we would do this um, differently. So uh, again, we'll send that link out um, with the link to the slides. Um, I just put it in chat as well. So we would definitely like your feedback. Um, in particular, like Michelle said, since this is the first time we've done this, 
would you are are there related uh, workshops, other topics that you would be interested in in the future, uh, whether related to public policy research or anything? We'd love to hear what else you want to know from that we could help you with. Okay. Yep. So the so, link to the feedback is um, in in the chat right now, and we'll make sure that you get that as well when we send out all the information in um, by email. Okay, so questions, comments, we hope you learned something. Uh, we hope you um, maybe uh, lessened some confusion in this area, but then again, maybe we just overwhelmed you because it is such a big topic. Okay, well, um, we thank you for your time. We really appreciate your um, participation and we can hang around for a few more minutes if uh, people have other questions, but if you don't, um, again, we appreciate you filling out the evaluation and um, we hope you will go outside and enjoy the nice weather. And I'm going to stop recording.